Leading the league, J.P. Morosi back with us on a Monday with some pitching-related information. We didn't get a whole lot of uh, info from you in our first visit about something Harold and I have already discussed, and that's the Tyler Glass now Manny Margot acquisition by the Dodgers. 136 and a half for five years. It all felt like it was headed that way from the moment the final out was recorded in the World Series. Yes, indeed. I like really both parts of this trade for the Los Angeles Dodgers, in addition to, of course, the extension with Glass now. But just for a quick moment, let's remember that Margot coming in really important because Mookie Betts is now an infielder for the Los Angeles Dodgers. So adding in that veteran outfielder in Margot, very important. But Glass now, to your point, back in his native Southern California, the ability for him to miss bats and, and to your point earlier, to get into October and be an impact starting pitcher late in the season, into the postseason, is what the Dodgers needed. This is the reward for them of having such a great farm system, being able to develop someone like Pepio. You can include Pepio in this deal while still having the likes of Miller and Sheehan and Stone still in place for you for the future. And I, I think it's important to note as well with Tyler Glass now, he is actually represented by the same agency that also represents Yoshinobu Yamamoto. So we know there's been a lot of conversations uh -huh. uh, between those two parties here in the last several days. So maybe there is still one more deal to go uh, between those two sides. We'll see what happens in the coming days. But I, I love this deal in a lot of different ways. Uh, the Rays, of course, still trying to find ways to stay competitive at a time where we know, of course, McClanahan is out. They were missing Rasmussen for part of the season as well. Pepio, I would say, is going to immediately become a very important starting pitcher for the Rays going forward. And once Glasnow's number got up above $20 million for one year, almost every single time the Rays are going to trade a player in that contractual situation. So they take in Pepio, who again, I think is a real triumph for the Dodgers player development system. Let's talk a little bit about uh, a guy that used to pitch for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Max Scherzer's run there was brief. Uh, so how long until he's back at full strength? Talk about his health, his relative contribution level in 2024. Well, Matt, this was tough news over the weekend for the reigning World Series champions. Max Scherzer having back surgery that will keep him out until the middle of the year. And so I, in this in this segment, we can talk about how it's certainly important for him to have clarity on what was bothering him so much late last year and why he wasn't himself in a Rangers uniform for a lot of the time after the trade at mid midseason. But I think to the to the bigger question now is you look at the overall rotation. You've got Jacob deGrom, IL. You've got Scherzer, now IL to begin the year. Uh, so And certainly they signed Ta Tyler Malley, but he's not going to be able to pitch either. This is a team that I think will need to get at least one more starting pitcher in the coming weeks. And I'll mention a couple of names here that I believe are especially relevant now that Scherzer is out. Lucas Giolito, who might be more of a multi-year possibility, who I think is drawing a lot of interest around the sport right now, in a similar category, I think, to, to Michael Waka, Jack Flaherty, and others. And then also Michael Lorenzen, who, of course, he was part of that midseason trade from Detroit to Philadelphia, struggled at times with the Phillies, but I think still you love the arm, really valued teammate. I think especially when you consider the, the amount of time Max is going to miss, that getting someone who's a veteran, dependable arm like Lorenzo, who, who can at least give you a solid half season, uh, maybe Granky fits that same category as well. But I would expect the Rangers now, even with the reliability of Dane Dunning already being there, they probably need one more starting pitcher in the coming weeks. All right, let's talk about some position players here, getting off the pitching for a moment. Uh, when we talk about Reese Hoskins, my, my directed question is this. What's taking the Cubs so long to sign Reese Hoskins? Matt, that's a great question, and and we, we've talked about Reese Hoskins and the Cubs before on this show. I still think the Cubs are part of that conversation, but one more team that I was told over the last several days are certainly involved, the Seattle Mariners, and we know the Mariners, uh, they have gone through some payroll questions. They had to lower their payroll with the Jared Kulnick trade and other moves they've made this offseason. The Eugenio Suarez trade is one more such example, 
But with Hoskins being from the Sacramento area, West Coast guy, so the Mariners sometimes have had a hard time drawing free agents who are from the Southeast to come all the way across the country. In the case of Hoskins, already a West Coast guy, spring training in Arizona might be actually good for him from that perspective. So I, I, I do think, Matt, the longer the Cubs wait on this, and they were certainly in there on glass now, they missed on glass now. If they keep waiting on Hoskins, they might miss him too. And the other, the only positive, I guess I would say, for the Cubs is that when you talk about Justin Turner, J.D. Martinez, Jorge Soler, there are some other corner bats available. But I agree with you, Matt, wholeheartedly. The Giants Hoskins should be all to the north side, Hoskins too. And I fully agree with that as well. The Giants are in a very interesting spot, Harold, because they they I mean, both nice need bats. Sense. But they've got bats. Conforto, Hanniger, they may end up moving one of those two guys uh, in a move for pitching as well. Yeah, I could see kind of a little geographic connection there with the Giants being in on Hoskins. But being from Sacramento, I don't know if it lends itself to the Mariners so much. I would respectfully uh, suggest that. Hey, let me ask you about a couple of teams or a couple of players uh, that there's some dialogue about with one roster. And that's with the Twins. And we've heard this for the last few weeks now. I guess assign similar to the exercise we just had by percentages. Assign percentage possibilities to a trade for either Max Kepler or Jorge Polanco. I would say one, at least one of the two going is probably at about 80%. And 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 maybe both going is probably right around 50-50, maybe even a little above. I, I really think the twins, as they look at their overall picture of their depth chart. What's happened since the end of the season is they've lost Sonny Gray, Cy Young finalist, and they've lost the dependable Kenta Maeda. And unless they find a way to sign one of the major free agent pitchers who are still out there, Shota Imanaga comes to mind as, as someone that could be a fit, Giolito as well, they probably have to move one of those players via trade to make it possible. And you look at what they've been able to do to bring in some of the younger talent, uh, position players. Walner comes to mind, uh, Kirilov as well. So that they have now this, this young group of position players coming in, Edouard Julien as well, the great native of Quebec City to play in the middle part of the diamond, which I think has made Polanco a bit more expendable. So I, I would point out one team here that makes a ton of sense, the Toronto Blue Jays. The Jays, they were in there on Otani. Of course, they missed him. They now need to bring in, Canada. I think, multiple bats. We all we all love Canada. And I think they need to find a way, Harold, to, to add in whether it's Polanco or Kepler or maybe even both. Ignore to the be able sound to balance board. out that lineup. Stop the sound board. Ignore Great that. job. Great job, JP. Uh, <laughs> we'll be watching the uh, trade embers flow in the Twin Cities. If, in fact, either one of those guys are moved, we'll go right back to this moment.